Why do I know you're a thief? You ask me. Why do you know that I'm a thief? I say, well, it's because uh, I see your eyes. The way your eye is moving, is moving like somebody who is a thief. Oh, I see that you have the tendencies to pick things and put in your pocket and not live on the floor. Assumptions. Oh, I say that, well, as I see you, you're somebody who gets angry easily. Oh, I see you, you're somebody who gets jealous very easily. Oh, as I see you, you're somebody who cannot be trusted. I know. When you come and say, I know, I know you. And you ask the question, how do you know me? Ah, I know you. I know you're a poor man. How do you know? I know you're a poor man because I see you wearing uh, uh, old clothing and cheap clothing and ragged shoes. I know you're a poor man. How do you know that that person that you're saying is poor is really poor? I know you're an angry person. I know you're a rich man or woman. I have seen somebody who drives an expensive car that actually has no money to rent a room that actually sleeps in that car as the house that they sleep in there are so many people like that seeing people wearing expensive clothing that find it difficult to pay their bills how do I know that they are rich that is what brings issues to us today. And that was what brought issues right from the beginning. I have told you that this sermon today is the greatest sermon of my life. The reason why we fight, the reason why we have problems is because we say, I know. How do you know? I have knowledge of. You have acquired through times. Or you have observed. I've observed you sneaking into the room. So you are sneaking into the room because you want to go and steal something. Oh, I've observed you looking at that woman say you, your eye is on her. Oh, I've observed you looking at that man, your eyes on him. How do you know? That is the beginning of problems in every single thing. I know, I know, I know you. Now you are a con man. I know you. You are a con woman. Because all the time you are sneaky, sneaky. You are sneaky. You are hiding things. You are sneaky. How do you know? You know, sometimes even the house of I know that uh, Pastor Matthew doesn't want to preach because uh, his English is bad. Oh, I know that that sister, I know she doesn't come to church because she's not even born again. How do you know? How do you know? How do I know to make those conclusions? It says to be aware of through observation or information or inquiry. Amen. So I'm observing you. As I make the observations, then I know. <laughs> That is the beginning of problems, right from the beginning. Amen? Are we enjoying it for another I'll stop? Probably at the end, all of you will not talk to me. I've told you it's the greatest sermon of my life. I know that he or she is walking in through that church. His or his mind is somewhere else. How do you know? As I see that person, you know, sleeping, it's because uh, uh, they are not listening. How do you know? Do you know if that person is even sick that made the effort to come to church? To say that even with my sickness, I'm going to come to church, whatever what. Even if I have to sleep in church, I will sleep in the house of God. I'd rather sleep in the house of God and dream that I'm listening to the scriptures than sleep at home. 
How do you know? I hope I'm not being recorded. A lot of people are going to be angry at me. I'm not saying this to exalt, but I've seen our pastor coming from work straight without sleeping. Sometimes I see him dozing in the church. He's probably going to say, Brother Benjamin will never come to the pulpit again. But he has told himself, I'd rather come and nap for five minutes so that I can continue the church service in the house of God than say, I am tired, I'm going to my room to sleep. How do I know? Oh, maybe Brother Stephen has assignment for school. He's very tired. And then he comes, he's sleeping half and half in church, and I'm shaking, I'm shaking, you're always sleeping in church, you're always sleeping in church. What are you doing all the time? How do I know? Probably in his mind, he is saying that, look, I'd rather come and sleep in the house of God. So that I'll be dreaming that I'm listening to the sermon, than saying I'm tired and I'll stay at home. How do I know? Assumption, we make assumptions that we know, and that is the basis for fight today in the church, in our homes, in friendship, at work, and even at the beginning itself. So let's go to the book of Genesis. Amen. When you're ready for me to stop, tell me to stop or because I still have like 25 minutes. Amen. I've told you that it's going to be the greatest sermon of my life because this transformed me myself to be who I am today looking at you. You will see how my brain thinks. It changed me. Let's look at Genesis chapter 3. I'll start from verse 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of every fruit. So I had a big conversation, right? Conversation. You know, you lure somebody. And that's how the enemy works. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. I'm starting from verse 1. And he said unto the woman, Ye, had God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? <laughs> that is how it starts. I know. Amen. The devil says, we will see, I know. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of every fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. God had said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. That was the instruction of God. So we say that knowing is what? To know is to be aware through observation, inquiry, or information. They were informed by God. Adam and Eve were informed by God. So Eve is passing that information on to the devil and saying, I am informed by God not to eat. That is how I know. That is how I know. If you see me sleeping in church, after church you say, Brother Ben, you know, what are you going through? Is everything okay at home? And then I say to you, bro, or my sister, you know, I couldn't sleep the whole night. But instead of staying at home, I'm saying my Redeemer leave it. I'd rather be where I'll be half sleeping and half listening to the word of God instead of sleeping in my bed. Amen. How did they know I'm informed? They were informed. So knowledge is acquired by a person through experience. You know, information. How did Eve know she was informed by God? Because God told them from the beginning. And for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof. Now, the devil is saying, uh -uh. saying, no, I don't think that you know. I don't think that you know. I don't think that you have the required information. 
You are not given the full information. That is what brings problems in the house of God. You know, when, when, when you don't get the full information from brother, when you don't get the full information from the sister, that is the conversation the devil is trying to use now. God did not give you the full information. That's what the enemy is telling Eve. Eve should have said, well, if God did not give me the full information, Father, you know, I thank you for your uh, compassion, Lord in heaven. The enemy is telling me you didn't give me. What is the full information? Tell me. She didn't do that. Amen. It is the same thing. You know, I'm having an issue with a sister or brother. You didn't take the full information. Somebody tells you something about me. Instead of coming and getting the full information, I just take action. You just take action. Based on if Eve at that time has said, I'm going back to the source of the information, let me get the full information, not from you, because even the partial information did not come from you. Let me get it back from the source. Eve didn't do that. And for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as God's knowing good and evil. Amen. If Eve had gone back, you know, they said that I did something. You heard about it. They said, this is what I said about you. And you heard about it. You're angry. You're upset. You know, you say, well, I call Benjamin. I call, you know, I call uh, this sister. Let's sit together. Hey, this is what I heard. You know, is that what it is? I'm angry. I'm upset. It solves everything. Eve did not do that. Well, she just took the information from the devil and supersede the information of God. And she says what? I know. Amen. She immediately says she has the knowledge required. She knows. She has the information required to do what she needs to do. She says now, I know. And the woman saw that the tree was good for food. And it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also to her husband with her and he did eat. Amen. So you gather the information, you go and you fight with the brother or sister. And then the truth comes out. Let's see the truth that will come out now. And the truth comes out. And you're sorry for yourself. And you're saying, if I had known, if I had known, I know. So when you say that you know, be careful. When you say that you know, be careful. When you say you have the complete knowledge, be careful. Because you might not. And that is what starts problem. That is the beginning of the problem we see here in Genesis. Let's hear. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon the belly shall thou go, and thus shall thou eat all the days of thy life. And I'll put enmity between the tree, between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And unto the woman he said, verse 16, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow, thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt, thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam he said, so it means that from the beginning, it wasn't so. God's design was different. But we see. So let me finish and then I'll give you the analogy to what happens to us today. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and hast eaten of the tree of which I command thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of curse is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy lives. 
So you take the little information, say, I know. I know that uh, you're a bad man, you're a bad woman, you're a thief. You know, you're a backbiter. You're somebody who comes to church and only plays. You're only somebody who comes to church and only sleeps. And then, uh, or you hear about, uh, you hear something, the information is not complete. You go and you cause a fight. And then you cause malice between people. Then you cause some kind of tension between people in the house of God. Gather all the information. I've said here on the people that, uh, you know, I know. So I'll give example of something that happens between me and uh, the pastor. He sent a text. I don't like text messages I'll, and emails. I prefer to talk to people because people can misread. And sometimes we can omit words that will change the complete uh, concept of the message that I want to pass across. So when I read the message, I was like, I don't understand this. Can you please explain? I know. So if I say, I know you are a bad person. I know that that message was a premeditated. That's how your mind is. So you can see that every day for things that happen to me, I try to learn to be a better child of God. God allows things to happen to me. He says that things happen, all things happen for good. Our Father in heaven allows things to happen for a purpose. Instead of getting angry at situations, I can get angry at situations. But you see, I'll tell you how my mind works. I can get angry and upset at a situation, and I'm also asking myself, what do I have to learn from what has just happened? So even though I'm upset and angry, but I'm also telling myself that, what can I learn from what has just happened? If you think all the time that way, then you never allow your anger to overshadow your judgment because that is the spirit of God in us. Because the flesh, because we carry the flesh, we will get angry. But our Father in heaven said that we should not allow the sun to come down on our anger. He said it. You have to find ways and look unto God himself. To see how you can overcome that. I can get upset. But in the moment that I'm upset, I'm also thinking of what can I learn from. I've given you the example. I know. When you say that I know. And sometimes we make assumptions that people know. It also creates conflicts. Gather more information. Communicate. That's why the Father in heaven has created that dialogue between us and him. We've seen that punishment comes from when we don't get the whole information and we say that we know. Adam and Eve said from the information I got from the devil, I know. God said, I've given you everything. Enticement. That's how the devil entices me and you. To say, I know. Why? So we've seen right from the beginning. Right from the beginning that knowing. Knowledge is very, very important. Why is knowledge important to me and you? So that we don't fall as Adam and Eve did. The, you know, the, the scripture says that it's written for me and you. For our admonition. For us to know. So that we don't make the same mistake. So the information now, the whole Bible, if you hear from the sermon that we heard this morning, it is because of all those things that the information is very important for me and you so that we know. 
Because if you know that you're supposed to humble yourself, then you continue to humble yourself. That God is going to exalt you. Then if you don't know, if you don't have those information, you continue to be arrogant and exalting yourself. But we've seen the example with Nebuchadnezzar as it was given. We've seen example with Saul. We've seen examples with people like Hitler. We've seen examples with so many people who rose to power and became arrogant. But we saw how they fell. Just like we heard this morning. How do you know? My brothers and sisters, how do we know? So that we don't fall into the predicament of Adam and Eve. How do me and you know? So that we don't fight every day. How do we know? So that the church is together. Marriages are together. Relationships are together. How do we know? By what? It says to know is through information. Knowledge is by information. And that is why you need to read your Bible every single day so that you will know so that you have the complete information and the knowledge. And we will see why. That if you don't know the things that will happen to you. Just like Adam and Eve. So let's look at Psalms 119 verse 66. So we have a few more minutes. We'll be reading the, we'll be reading the Bible. So we have like 10 minutes more. We'll be reading the Bible. So be ready with your hands. You'll be opening the Bible here and there. Amen. I didn't hear amen. amen. It looks like uh, there are people who are already upset with me. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Psalm 119. Why do we need to know? Why do me and you need to know? Psalm 119. Verse 66. 11966. It says, Teach me good judgment and knowledge. For I have believed that commandments. Amen. So, so it, David is saying, I have read and believed your commandment, right? Even though I have read. But he's saying, teach me. He says, teach me. He says, teach me judgment and knowledge. He says, information skills acquired by a person through experience or education. The practical or theoretical understanding of a subject. That's what David is asking for. He said, I have read your word. And I have read your commandment now. I want to know it. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 8. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 8. We'll be reading the Bible. I like that it's coming from the Bible. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 12 verse 8. Why do we need to continue to read, to get informed so that we know, right? We want to read the Bible so that we have information, so that we say, I know. When you say read, uh, 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 say, uh, Psalm 123. Or Psalm 119, or to say uh, John chapter, um, say John chapter 7 7. In the beginning, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, we say, In the beginning. And then Psalm 23, he said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall. They said, Do you know Psalm 23? Yes, I know. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall know one. He maketh me to lie down uh, 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 beside the still waters. Amen. Though I shall walk through the valley of death, my father is with me. So you're saying, I know. When they say something, you raise your hand and you say, I know. Why do you need to know? Why do you need to have that information in the Bible? Why? You know, I have said that if Adam and Eve had the complete knowledge, if they had gone to God and said, no, the enemy is saying the, the knowledge that you gave us is not complete, God will have explained to them. 
If we know, if somebody comes to me and tells me something about somebody else, and I said, well, I need to find out first. I inquire. It's like intelligence gathering. That is why God, what government does. They give them in, information about so many things that can happen. And then they go into details to now verify those information. To say, is the intelligence credible or not? So you're not asking, is the information credible or not? The only way you can know an information is credible is if you read the Bible, my friends. The only way, so because so that they will say, when they say, when they say that, look, this is it. They have, we've gathered everything, we've analyzed, we've come to the conclusion that the information is legit. That is why me and you, so that we make assertion. When I say that that brother is a child of God, and you come to me and I tell I know, I know that sister is a child of God. I, I know. Because this is what the word of God said about his or her children. Prayerfully, making spirit, humble, not exalting themselves, You know, my next sermon is going to be about Paul. When he said to the Gentiles, I became a Gentile to the Jews, I became a Jew. Amen. I told the Bible is rich, my brothers and sisters. I can stand here for 10 hours and be talking about the Bible to you. That is the only book that I read. I don't read any other book. Because I'm a lazy reader. Amen. But every time I read the Bible, I find calmness. You know, I find it suits my heart. And I get so much, I will tell you, I know. Amen. So why do we need to read the Bible? So that you will say, so that I know. When you say that you know, you can stand and say the information that you have is credible. You know, the government will say, they say, well, they're going to attack that place. Is the information credible? Is the intelligence credible? Why? You gather, you go in depth, you do analysis. You see, now people in, in the world are doing analysis, making credibility. We don't do the same in the house of God. We chastise one another. We don't even say, bro, let me pray with you. Amen? Amen? By the time I'm done, probably no one will talk to me. Praise the Lord. I didn't hear a hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. We have a few minutes to read more of the scriptures. And there's so much in the Bible. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8. For one is given. <laughs> so the gift that we get from God, amen. For one is given the spirit, the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit. Why? You know, they said that, they, you know, praise the Lord. They said the spirit, the word of wisdom. You know, you come to that brother or sister, they're talking to you wisdom and the knowledge. The spirit of knowledge, amen. Why? Why? Because it's a gift that God has said is very important for me and you. Because when you say you know, when they come to you and say, you know, like today when we read James, the book of James, chapter 4, I think the verse 5. When the general overseer was talking about jealousy, he said the spirit. He was talking about jealousy. He explained. He explained to say that, look, is that the jealousy is about jealous to follow other gods. That the spirit of God that is in you is jealous of you. It's a holy jealousy that God is a jealous God that doesn't want you to worship another God. Without the knowledge and understanding of the scriptures, the interpretation of my brother or sister will have been different. But it was well explained, like uh, 
you know it was well explained as if I, I, I was sitting here I thought that I was sitting in primary school yeah the way that it was explained so simple it said if any of you lack wisdom let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not and it shall be given him so verse 6 but let him ask in faith nothing wavering oh sorry sorry my mistake sorry verse chapter 4 James chapter 4 verse 5 I was reading James chapter 1 yeah chapter 4 verse 5 do ye think that the scripture said in vain the spirit that dwelleth in us lost said to envy you're reading this and you say what is this talking about that the spirit that dwelleth in us lost said to envy if you look at it from a layman's language you say well Oh, this is not said in the Old Testament because in the Old Testament there was no Holy Spirit. Why will the Holy Spirit in us uh, lost to envy? No, the Holy Spirit will lost it to envy. But it was explained very easy. He said, look, the Spirit of God in you is jealous that you should not worship other gods. It's knowledge. To same spirit. So to same is given of understanding. Amen? That's what we read. Praise the Lord for his wisdom and understanding. I, amen. It says, for one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom and another the, the word of knowledge by the same, it's by the same spirit. That explanation, explaining breaking down. If you say, I know, say, I know. Do you really know? Why do you need to know? Proverbs 1 verse 7. Proverbs 1 7. Proverbs 1 7. All right, I'll be reading the scriptures very fast now. Proverbs 1 7. We'll read a lot, a lot from Proverbs. So don't close your Proverbs. When you open to Proverbs, don't close it, please. We'll read a lot from Proverbs. I like the book of Proverbs. Although my favorite book is the book of Job. Amen. Proverbs chapter 1. Amen. Verse 7. Praise the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. It's saying what? It says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. So when you despise wisdom and instruction, amen, from God, who are you? When you despise wisdom and instruction from the Lord, who are you from the Bible? It says it's only fools who do that. But it says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. When you fear the, in fact, when you fear the Lord, you understand the Lord, it, you have started, it says you have started to know. You have begun to know. Hosea 4, 6. Hosea 4, Hosea 4, Hosea chapter 4, 6 to 7. If anyone opens before me, they can read. Hosea chapter 4. Hosea is after the book of Daniel. Chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. Praise the Lord. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy father, I will also forget thy children. As they were increased, so they sinned against me. Thereof, I will change their glory into shame. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's why we need to know. My people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. You know, when the Bible says do not be unequally yoked and you do it, you lack the knowledge. So what you get into issues, you get into destruction in your businesses and everything. You know, when the Bible says, well, don't steal and you steal, you go to jail. For lack of knowledge. 
It is because we don't read the Bible to get the information because we've seen that knowledge is information. Because we don't read the Bible to get information, destruction comes to us. We don't get to where we are supposed to be in the house of God. Proverbs 18 verse 15. Proverbs 18 15. Proverbs 18 15. The heart of the prudent gathered, no, the, the heart of the prudent getted knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeked knowledge. Amen. The heart of the prudent. We know prudent like to be prudent. You know, you're spending your money wisely, your time is wisely, everything is wise. Amen. Someone once said to me that uh, I was talking to the person about how I manage my time and everything. And the person told me it's part of being smart. And it's not part of being smart. Amen. It's part of knowing. So time management, material management, money management, everything. See, when I walked into work, right, I have a timetable in my head, all the things that I need to do for the day. Sometimes people, they start seeing me walking very, very fast. They stop me, I'm doing two or three things at the same time. People are looking and saying, I'm amazed how he can do all these things together with no efforts at all. The Bible says what? When you know, you become prudent. Because I know that I have a time frame that I need to finish and go home. I manage my time wisely. When I'm eating, I'm working at the same time. Why? Because I understand that I have a limitation of time. When you have your money, right? You know that you're making $50 a month. You make your budget and say, come May, I have to save $2 a month. Doesn't matter what. I have to save $2. You're on your budget. Why? Because you know you're saving what? For the rainy day. And the Bible says what? When you know, prudent comes with what? Knowledge. They say the prudent gatherer, so you gather, you get all the information that you need so that you can use everything wisely. My brothers and sisters, I can continue on and on. But we'll leave here by 11.30. Praise the Lord. The ear of the wise sacred knowledge. You want to be wise. So every time you're listening. You're, see, when somebody comes and talks to me, like I've said, this is just me. Like even when I'm having a bad discussion with you, at the same time, one part of my brain is thinking to learn from what you are saying to me. That what is it that I'm doing that is wrong, that I need to correct. So my other brain, while my other brain is listening to you, one is walking to say, now he's saying, How, what can I learn from this person? How, what can I learn? If you don't know, I learn from everybody that I have encountered with every single day. When somebody tells you I'm smart, tell them no. I'm somebody who likes what? To listen. It says the prudent ear, sorry, the, 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 um, says the ear of the wise, sacred knowledge. You're listening. You're watching. If this is how you normally remove grass from your lawn, and then you see somebody else is removing grass, you're standing and saying, oh, that person, I do mine in 20 minutes. That person does in 10 minutes. So what is the person doing different? That I'm not. That's being wise, my brothers and sisters. Let's read the scriptures and we close. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 10. So we'll read more scriptures and then we'll close. Proverbs chapter 2, 10. 2, 10. When wisdom entereth into the heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul. When wisdom entereth into thy, thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto their soul. You know, think about how happy you will be. They say, uh, two plus two, I know, three. They say, uh, open the book of John chapter uh, two verse one. You don't even open, I know it. I will recite it from my head. See how you feel. You know, you're looking around and saying, 
I know it looks like I'm the only one who knows this. Nobody knows it. Remember when you were a kid in school? They ask a question and you're the only one who raises your hands and answers the question. How, how, you know, how you feel? You feel so, you know, so smart. Has that happened to any of you before? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah, it's, I know it, I know it, you know. And let me, I'll answer it right now. It says what? It says, it's knowledge is pleasant unto the soul. It's pleasant when you know something, right? You know it correctly. You know, that's the question, you know it correctly. Praise the Lord. Let's read Proverbs chapter 8, verse 10. Somebody will read 8, verse 10. Somebody can open to Proverbs 24, verse 5. 8, 10, somebody opens to 24 verse 5, and now open Proverbs chapter 15 verse 14. When you reach there, you say amen. Amen. I'll read 15 verse 14. The heart of him that had understanding sacred knowledge, but the mouth of fools fed it on foolishness. Has somebody opened? Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Knowledge rather than gold. You know, I have said it that um, I have the knowledge, like I have the skills, right? In my specialty, I can go anywhere in the world and work. I don't have to know how to speak the language. I don't have to know anything. I can be hired anywhere in the world. Why? Because I have the information. It is power. Amen. Has somebody gone to 24-5? Amen. Amen. So can somebody read uh, Proverbs 21-1? Uh, and then some, I will read Proverbs 1-22, then we close. Proverbs 12-1, I will read 1-22. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Praise the Lord. So 122 and we close. How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight on their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Amen. It says, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning. And fools hate knowledge. Praise the Lord. I know. When you say that you know. When you say that you know. What does it mean? I know. It brings issues to the house of God. We saw right from the time of Adam and Eve. It brought a lot of problems. That was the beginning. And how Adam and Eve fell and we'll see how important it is when you say you know why do we need to know why do we need to know why do we need to read the Bible so that what we know so that we know so that we have all the information required we are powerful when I come and carry the Bible on my armpit and say praise the Lord to you on the street you are talking to me I know I know my Redeemer liveth. I know my Redeemer liveth. I know my Redeemer liveth. He liveth forevermore. I know my Redeemer liveth. I know my Redeemer liveth. I know my Redeemer liveth. He liveth forevermore. Our pastor will close with a word of prayer. Praise the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us stand up to pray. Our mighty Father, we glorify your name because of this message. 
we thank you lord because of how you have taught every one of us we glorify your name because of new thing you have taught us we glorify your name because of the your son you have used we glorify your name because of the knowledge and the understanding you have given him almighty father we pray by the power and the blood of jesus christ we take all the glory in jesus name by the time he come he came to the pulpit he let us know that the word that's going to come in from this pulpit should be embroidered to glorify your name almighty father he has spoken to every one of us i pray you will interpret the word into our heart in jesus name you have used him i pray by the power in the blood of jesus christ you will reveal him through the holy spirit in jesus name he has let us know about i know and I, a lot of verses has been taken from the bible when the devil said i know because of the grace you are given to me i will help in in addition to the preaching and then for more clarification and i pray for every one of us we speak to our heart in jesus name the devil said i know which our teacher, our teacher has told us and then whenever the devil comes he has tell us we should be careful of i know of the devil because they will never produce anything good and that's why he has told us whatever we had we need to measure it with the word of god with the word of the bible so that instead of building house instead of building church instead of building human being we are talking to he will destroy it knowledge and understanding we need to able to wait i know of devil to the instruction of almighty god do not eat this god will give to us in jesus name and god said i know you from your womb when we look at the the two nose they are two opposites god himself he said i know you and i know what you can do from your womb i know you when we look at this two we say that there's a difference between two of them that come to the conclusion of what he lay emphasis on on where he let us go back to the bible from page to page that measure the know you want to talk about is this out of flesh it is out of your own understanding it is out of your own view it is out of, out of your own pre, pre, i mean predetermine or predict the predicament I mean, I, I, that whenever you want to use this word i know compare it compare it to the word of the lord and by the power and the blood of jesus christ god will justify your decision in jesus name you will not take decision out of the flesh you will not take decision out of your own personal view you will not take your decision out of this is my way you will not take decision out of selfishness you will not take decision out of self-center you will not take decision this is how i want it to be but you will take it, it this is how god knows is going to be not how devil know it's going to be father he has presented your word interpret it 
because you said to every one of us including me including him including every one of us that have had this message as our heart is shaking he said two sided sword i pray by the power and the blood of jesus christ lord you will justify every one of us in jesus name I quickly pray that prayer because under every one of us, we are under that message, including me. That that word, I will not say because I'm a pastor or oh, I'm this, I know that will kill me. Then I won't bother. So every one of us that we are listening to this message, including me, that want to come, to come and lead the end of the prayer, Lord. It will justify us at the end in Jesus' name. Amen. Ability to make sure that I know you will give to every one of us in Jesus' name. Amen. And your name is going to be glorified. Thank you, Lord, because you are the Lord that answer prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's share the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, as you follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. And you look back and then, Sister Priscilla, you see what I'm saying? Look back. Can't you see visitor? Then remove that glass if you need to remove it. <laughs> you are welcome. Huh? The, the grace of the Lord will continue to be upon you. The mighty hand of the Lord will continue to be upon you. My sister was nearly crying yesterday in the workers' meeting that we have not been seeing physical. I don't know if she's seeing that you are coming. <laughs> so you are welcome. Can you introduce yourself to us, Ma? Oh, you are welcome. So, yeah. Yeah, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Wait, please. Very good song. Where is my wife? <laughs> In the name of the Lord. You are welcome. In the name of the Lord. We are singing. The glory of the Lord, you are welcome in the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name, you won't go back as in Jesus' name. For you, the glory of the Lord. You won't go back in, in Jesus' name. Amen. Please let us be seated just for five minutes. Uh, praise the name of the Lord. Um, sister, I just want you to know that uh, God has a purpose for your coming. And then I can say that, like what the message our pastor told us, you know, God knows. <laughs> And then he has fulfilled it. My sister was so bothered, I mean, bothered yesterday. And then I think I wrote a message to you on Facebook that just let us continue. And the grace of the Lord will be sufficient. Whoever knows that you, you are even watching us on Facebook. So I was telling her just, she shouldn't bother. She should just wipe her with her tears. And I saw her wiping her tears. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So this is the Bible Church of Charlotte Fay. You have seen us. We have a bigger church. We have a church in Nigeria whereby there's more than one million people. So we have church in Charlotte, uh, in Washington DC, more than 2,000. So if we, we have in Fairfax, we have in Richmond, we have almost all over the world. Not almost all over the world. We have all over the world. So, see yours mean that this is how Charlotte is. 
so and then by the time my wife gives you all this material you will know what i'm saying it's not just a small church but uh, and i know god has a purpose for bringing you here and by the power and the blood of jesus christ he will you know there's one prayer i will not be greedy i only greedy about things of the god <laughs> so do not mind me i want to see god will permanent you in jesus name <laughs> So when I use that word, that means I want to be seeing you every time. I want to be seeing you every time. My brother here is our sad scripture leader. Then my wife is a prayer uh, coordinator. You see that my sister, he will trace you to the O of the aunt. So when you are saying your uh, messages, a telephone call, please speak it. <laughs> Don't say, oh, she has come again. <laughs> Please. So we have our house fellowship every Sunday, like this evening. We rotate it. We go from house to house in order to accommodate all our family. Anytime we come, you can invite your family. We sit down with you. We discuss together about the word of God. Like today we have visitation. And that's as sure you are giving me if you can assure me next month we want to come and visit you so i too am I'm very very greedy <laughs> welcome to the thing of the lord god will bless you in jesus name like today we are visiting one of our brother that has an accident so we only do visitation every last sunday of the month of the month so if you allow me i know <laughs> some people always say i'm too forward but if it is good if it, let's say you say i should come and collect one million dollars now and you are my own one million dollar <laughs> for coming to the house of the lord i won't wait <laughs> i won't wait so see you mean a lot to me so that's why i always be too anxious uh, monday tomorrow we are having bible study you will never never regret for coming to our bible study if you love bible if you love bible you will I still say it you know i'm on the purpose you will never never regret for coming to our bible study and then i know as you are coming we always have it within seven o'clock to eight thirty except sometime our pastor message will be long but if it's just by eight thirty before nine we have closed and then i promise you once again you will never never regret for coming to our bible study then we have our Thursday conference prayer. They will give you a program before you go. We have a Bible online. Every family will be online from 6 to 7. We are so fortunate. We still have one for our pastor that always joins us from Nigeria. That's how you see how God has blessed us too much. Not only that, you can look at it on YouTube. If we get home now, you want to see most of our program just type the Pala bible church on google charlotte Fee. if you type the Pala bible church you will see a loss <laughs> minnesota new jersey washington dc but so in order to classify your put charlotte Fee there so the other other program it is a program you can watch whatever we produce is what they produce what i mean they are the same but our own program now is quite different from the uh, the faces you are going to see there is not the faces you are going to see here i don't know if you can if you get what i'm saying so what i mean is the same thing the reason why i said that is that not that you cannot watch their program you will just be very very happy that you are then you will see standard by standard <laughs> praise the lord but we are coming and we have arrived <laughs> <laughs> praise the lord in jesus name uh that's a uh, on thursday then every sunday like this by 8 50 we are here then we start by 8 50 till 11 11 30 just you can see so by 11 30 we close except occasionally like somebody like me i like long preaching my gs like long preaching but my brother here is always man of time Praise the Lord. So by maximum 12, but 11.30 is our closing hour. So we will have 
we have a lot of material you can't finish them and then we will continue to get into uh, that's material we will continue to do, let you have them it's something that if you open uh, except you don't like you don't like bible as far as it is bible you won't you won't want to go to any other church than the Father bible church and that's the basis of our christianity and that's why we are not many because no compromise no compromise no compromise and god is going to help every one of us in jesus name uh, the brother there is uh, i call him my assistant many times three o'clock midnight is still with me the wife will say ah won't you release my husband <laughs> he's a married man you cannot be using him like that. <laughs> but, uh, to my, my arrow my region of Asia will tell me your peace is my peace so it is when i have peace oh, <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. I so love their family so much. Uh, the grace of the Lord will continue to be with every one of us in Jesus' name. If there's any other thing, please uh, personally consult us. My brother is working in UVA, and then I always brag of him. So, but I won't brag of him today on the puppet. <laughs> then uh, my wife, too, if she love women. <laughs> and then so i know she will carry you away I, and then we are the best people you can see in the world except you don't like bible as far as you love bible i want to promise you that we are so accommodated accommodated accommodate. i don't want to use past tense <laughs> so i don't know which was <laughs> I like being funny. <laughs> so, God will help us in Jesus' name. So once again, you are welcome. Man. We will be very, very grateful to be seeing you from tomorrow. <laughs> so is there any other thing we need to discuss with our mom? So sister Priscilla, and then you, my wife. Yeah. Then we can still see my office a little bit. We just discuss. Just great. Thank you. God bless you.